Blender is an extremely powerful, free, open source 3D modeling application. Now, when my wife thinks I'm watching her YouTube makeup tutorials with her, I'll actually be making 3D models. Shh, don't tell her. Let's jump in it. Right out of the gate, you can see how responsive manipulating a 3D model is in Blender. And the interface is easy to read on my go because I have it set to 175% zoom. However, even if you have your Surface Go set to the default 150% zoom, you can open up the user preferences from the file menu and change it to suit your needs. So let me go ahead and show you that right now. If you head to the file menu, you're gonna to go to the interface tab. And then from there, we're gonna to go to the scale slider. Once you're there, all you need to do is slide the slider to the right or to the left, and that will increase or decrease the size of the interface. As you see here, you can really go all in if you need to. So don't worry too much about the window scaling when you can do it right here. Now, even though this is not a tutorial, let me take you on a quick tour of the interface. Up at the top, we have the main menu, also known as the info pane. Here you can open, save, and find preferences, as you could in most applications. Over on the left, we have the tool shelf where you can find different categories of tools to control and manipulate your objects. Along the bottom of the interface, we can choose how to view our scene, add objects, and control how those objects appear in the main window. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to change how I'm viewing my object, and I'm leaving object mode and heading into edit mode. This display mode allows me to see my model as all the parts that make it up, the vertices, the edges, and the faces, also known as polygons. And on the right, we have our properties panels where we can see the hierarchy of items, assign colors and textures, manipulate our lights, and more. Blender also supports a very robust import function that lets you bring in objects from a variety of different 3D applications and formats, such as Autodesk's FBX, Collada, all the way to my most used, which is OBJ. So if you want to bring in your objects from another 3D application, choose FBX or OBJ as my suggestion because they're the most widely used for interchangeability between 3D applications. Also included in Blender is the ability to create 3D rigs or bones for your objects so that you can animate your characters and creatures I think it has one of the most intuitive rigging systems of the 3D apps I've used. So as you can see here, I'll slide the character over and inside you see the bones that I created. The bones will connect to the skin of the character and when you bend those bones, once you bind it to the character, that character will then follow the bones. So when you bend the arm, for example, the character's arm bends and so forth. It's an extra step and it takes a little setup, but you know what, it's well worth it once you're done. So make sure you get your rig set up properly before you begin animating. And always do tests on your rigs first before you commit to production. So let's put Blender into one of the most processor intensive display modes, the rendered mode. This is great for testing out what your model would look like after doing a full render so you can see in advance what your lights, shadows, and everything else will look like before you actually render it. It's also a great way to get a sense for whether your model reads well on screen. So far it's performing very well on the default Windows uh, Go setup. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it all the way up to full because I want unlimited power. I know, I'm sorry. 
Now, what I recommend is when you work with Blender or any intensive application, plug it in so you can get full power without worrying about battery. Also, you can crank up that performance all the way to the right and you don't have to worry about anything else. When you're doing light things like sketching or drawing or anything like digital painting, I usually leave it unplugged and I put it on moderate settings. For everything else, I treat it like a real computer, I plug it in and I get the full enjoyment out of using the Go. If you think Blender might be something you'd like to try, once again, it's free, so feel free to download it. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Here's a quick peek at their website. And trust me, you won't believe what Blender can do. It's kind of on the insane tip. Now, if you want to learn Blender, I suggest you take your time because any 3D software is going to require that. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. So leading into notes, because that's what this channel is about, be sure to watch my videos on how to use Google Keep on your devices so that you can use it to jot down notes as you learn Blender and other applications. That's what it's for. So if you like this video, punch that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And please subscribe and share with your friends. So until the next video, guys, take care and peace.